I took the oil pump apart just to inspect it, see if it's in good shape, see if I can reuse it or not. Screen looks good. Nothing wrong there. It's not plugged up. The gears turn real nice and even. I don't feel any side to side play in the shaft. And then I was looking at the cover. I want to check to see how flat this is. I put this down on a nice flat steel surface. I can test it by trying to rock it back and forth. See if it see if it feels like it's doing this. Maybe just a slight bit that way. It rocks just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just I got some 800 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to put this on here and just. Put it that's nice nice and smooth Let's see if that rocking is still there now I don't feel any rocking at all another interesting thing about these oil pumps is this is the shaft that comes down from the distributor and it goes into the oil pump. That's what drives the oil pump. And it's got this little plastic sleeve on there that's supposed to kind of go over that joint. But these plastic sleeves get old and brittle over time. So I'm gonna keep the pump because the pump seems like it's in perfectly fine shape. I don't need to go with a high volume pump or anything like that. I'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> but they make an aftermarket shaft that has a steel sleeve welded onto it right here instead of this plastic thing. The standard volume pump versus high volume pump. Which one do you need? Well, from what I've read, if you've got a street motor with pretty tight bearing clearances and you're not gonna spin it past 7,000 RPMs, a standard volume pump is all you need. You don't want any more you know, higher volume than that. But if you've got a race motor that's gonna spin 7,000, 7,500 RPMs, you're gonna need looser bearing clearances for that anyway. And so with those looser bearing clearances, then you would want the high volume pump. So for me, this is a street motor, tight clearances. It's actually going in a truck, so it's not going to see much more than 5,000, 5,500 RPMs. I don't want a high volume pump for that. And they also say a high volume pump can suck a stock pan completely dry. So if you're going to use a high volume oil pump, you should have a, a really deep pan, you know, six, seven, eight quart pan so that you don't suck the pan dry. Next thing I'm going to do is check the pressure relief valve. So this thing has, it's got a plug in there with a roll pin. See that little hole in the top and bottom? That pin is what holds that in. And that plunger kind of goes back and forth and that's your pressure relief valve. So if, you, if the pump builds too much pressure, it can release and there's a hole in that thing where it just lets oil pass by and pump back out into the pan. I have to tap that roll pin out, check to make sure that plunger slides in and out easily and it's not all gunked up. And if everything's good, I can just put it back together and tap the pin back in. So this is the piece, we just need to make sure that this is clean and that it moves freely in that passage. And this one feels like it binds up a little bit. So I'm gonna spray in there with carb cleaner, see if I can get those nice and clean so this slides real smoothly. It's a plastic brush. Okay, I got the plunger and the spring back in and I got the roll pin back in. Roll pin punched in pretty tight. So I'm pretty confident that's not going anywhere. And it seems like the plunger slides nice and smoothly in there. I put some oil in there. So I think we're good to go. If you're wondering how this pump works, these pumps have a reputation. I guess small block and big block Chevy pumps have a reputation for being pretty bulletproof. 
last a long time. You can see because there's nothing to them. There's basically two moving parts and that's it. Well, except for that the plunger on the spring and the cap. But what this does is there's a shaft that comes down from your distributor. It's driven by your cam and that's what turns your oil pump. And what this does is when those gears mesh, kind of like a supercharger, it's sucking air from here and pushing it up there. So when the gears turn like this, it creates a vacuum in this pocket right here. So that vacuum causes it to suck oil up from the pan. So this pickup tube sticks down in the pan. This would be upside down actually. So it, it goes like that. So when those gears spin, it creates a vacuum right here that sucks oil in and it pushes the oil through to this side, pressurizes this side, which then goes out and pressurizes your engine with oil. It's quite a different design from the LS motors. I actually do a lot of LS stuff. The LS has a pump that mounts right on the front of the engine, right on the crank snout, right behind the timing cover. So it's a pretty different design than this, but it also kind of works the same way. It's got two big round gears, one inside the other, and they just rotate and push the oil. So it's similar, it still only has two moving parts, just like this. So I'm actually gonna clean out these holes with carb cleaner, clean the bolts real well, and put Loctite on them before I put the cap back on. So I put the bolts in degreaser, and let them soak for a while, clean that off, and now I've got them soaking in carb cleaner. So I want all the oil off of them so that the Loctite will stick. I'm trying to get as much oil and crud as I can out of there or my Loctite won't stick. Q-tips always come in handy in the garage. Put some engine assembly lube in there just because it's a little thicker so for first start up hopefully that'll help it really build oil pressure quickly i'm about to put the cap on i got some red loctite and i cleaned the holes really well and also look at these bolts see how dry they look putting them in degreaser and then carb cleaner they came out really super dry so you can tell there's no oil on those threads anymore and that's what i want I looked up the torque spec for these little bolts and it's 80 inch pounds. So we got the little baby torque wrench out set to 80 inch pounds. So to attach the oil pump to the engine, I got an ARP stud kit instead of the bolt. There's the part number for that. And they say you just thread that down into the block finger tight and then tighten the nut to 60 foot pounds. One thing you want to do though is I want to measure the depth of that hole because if you look down in there, that's the bearing that we're looking at right there. That silver part, that's the actual main bearing. So we don't want that bolt to touch that bearing. So just to be on the safe side, I want to make sure that these coarse threads aren't long enough to go down in there and touch that bearing. I don't think they will be, but I'm going to measure it just to be sure. I measured the oil pump threads in the block and they're as long as, as this thing. So we can see the ARP stud, that's nowhere near long enough to go down and contact the, the bearing. The stock bolt actually is closer, but it looks like there's a little bit of clearance at the end there too, so the stock bolt wouldn't touch the bearing either. So I got the stud finger tight, and I put some ARD Ultra Torque on the threads and on the washer. I'll put some on the face of this nut. And that gets torqued to a very controversial 60, 55 to 60. One guy called ARP and they told him 65, but the other guys say, no, 55, because you don't want to distort the main cap. So I'll probably just 
go in the middle and make it 60. And it's 60. Okay, so I'm an idiot and I didn't realize that you can't put the oil pump shaft in later. That has to go in with the pump because the hole's not big enough to thread it through from the other side later. So that has to go on at the same time that you put the pump on. So I put some assembly lube in there. This is the new one that I bought with the steel collar instead of the plastic collar that broke, the factory one. Sixty. 